The Niger River, once West Africa's most flourishing waterway. Countless steamboats plied its currents. Busy docks and traders lined its shores. Today, the mighty Niger is silted up, shallow and poor. A grim testament to the droughts and erosion that have ravaged this continent. Among the areas most vulnerable to drought is this one. It's a region called the Sahel. The Sahel is a borderland of scrub trees and grasses with the vast Sahara Desert to the north and the wetter savanna and rainforest to the south. Among the countries of this region is Niger, named for the Niger River. Although life here has always been precarious, for centuries the people of Niger could count on their croplands, their herds, and the sparse but rugged natural vegetation to see them through. But not anymore. There's little left to count on. A denuded landscape, the hot sun, and temperatures that reach 120 degrees Fahrenheit bake the naked soil. The winds claw at it, grasp it, and send it swirling to smother all in its path. A bush will safeguard the soil if it survives until the rains come. And if the rains come, these millet fields will turn green. But in the Sahel, you can never count on the rains coming. A generation ago, there were forests here. Old men speak of the lions and the antelope, the water buffalo and giraffe. They once hunted here. And the women remember the farmlands and the short walk for firewood. Over time, more people, more animals sought to nourish themselves from this land. And they took more than it could give. Pour celui qui l'aurait traversé eh, d'est en ouest, du nord au sud, il verra que c'est un arrondissement qui est, dont le relief est accidenté, très dégradé. Parce que nous avons eh, des chaînes de collines eh, très nombreuses, nous avons des terres de glacis. Eh, C'était des anciens champs qui sont transformés en glacis, donc eh, impropres à la culture. Nous avons des terres de vallées qui sont potentielles, mais eh, elles ne sont pas eh, suffisantes pour l'ensemble, pour, euh, disons, satisfaire l'ensemble de la population. In the past, when the rains failed and the pastures and fields turned dry, nature was their safety net. They ate wild game, roots, seeds. They survived and waited for better times. But in the 1930s, under colonial rule, new demands were placed on the land. Cattle raising for the export market. Cattle grazed and overgrazed, leaving nothing to protect and hold the soil. As the herds grew, forests were cut to make way for more and more pasture. population has doubled in the last 26 years and the growing nation turned even more to the land to support its people clearing it cropland cutting its trees for fuel exposing even more of it to the sun the heat and the wind so branch by branch limb by limb, day by day, Niger began to lose its ability to survive. And now farmers
farmers flock to the city, seeking jobs, a taste of the modern life. Niamey, the capital of Niger. Here, the streets and the traffic, the concrete and glass office buildings, and the watered parks. They all mask the scenes of a dying landscape. When the dry spells of the 1980s dealt farmers one crop failure after another, Niger had to look for outside help, like the rest of the Sahel. It received emergency aid from Europe and North America. Depuis des années, l'Afrique euh, du Sahel, la partie sahélienne, est confrontée presque une année sur six ou sept à la sécheresse. Et nous avons jusqu'à là été aidés par des grains. Nous avons été aidés par des grains alimentation céréalière. C'est une urgence. Les partenaires, dans ce cas, savent bien qu'ils nous ont sauvés d'une situation d'urgence. Mais l'expérience a démontré que tous les 5-6 ans, il y a un retour de la sécheresse. The magnitude of the 1984 drought was without precedent in recent history. Millions of tons of grain poured into Africa to help see them through the crisis. It was a truly generous and heroic effort. Over 7 million people were saved from starvation. But once it was over, foreign donors and Africans alike began to ask some hard questions. Maintenant, qu'est-ce que les partenaires pensent faire pour l'Afrique en vue de prévenir dans les six années à venir ou cinq années à venir un retour possible de la sécheresse et ne plus, n'est-ce pas, être pris de court dans des moments où euh, tout est perdu pour venir en aide sauvée par des grains. Le souhait à exactement qu'on est en train justement de formuler pour nous, en tout cas ici dans notre département et dans notre pays, c'est d'entreprendre avec les partenaires, bien sûr, une, un type d'aide qui n'est plus celui d'attendre le mal avant de soigner. After the famine, the government of Niger realized that there would have to be some fundamental changes if they hoped to survive future droughts. So change began with the most traditional and vulnerable of the country's people, the nomads. Now for centuries, the legendary Kel Tomchek, Tabu, and Palani wandered the length and breadth of the Sahel. They owned great herds, thousands of cattle, goats, sheep, and donkeys. The men rode high on their camels, hundreds of miles a year across open landscapes, leading their herds to water and pasture. They gathered in market towns to trade, barter, and exchange news. Today, they're lucky to be alive. This is Aduna Rebo, a Fulani nomad. Until recently, he, his wife, Du Hill, and their children were always on the move. Their livelihood, their entire wealth, was in 63 cows that they owned. In Akayane, Mukona, Kona, Bu, Kona, Uku, Saimuta, Shimoshanye, Wuri, Kuma Mugusa, Kulum Hakanane, Muna, Shekara, Muna, Yi, In, In Damana, Yai, Chawa, Yai, To Sai, No, No, Kau, Muchesha, Bamusha, Komi, Bamuson, Hazi Bamuson da Bamuson Shinkafa Bamuson Komi Sai no no kawe Muna sha da no no kama wata shi da wata bokoi Har tokos muna kai muna sha no no To muda tunda muche Tunda Allah ya yi mu mude da dunya Abisa kiwo muche Muna kiwo muna kiwo muna kiwo To Har bara Bara wachan To da munka Babu 
sai gwamnati ya she mu zo ka santa balas half starved Rebo and other nomads were brought in government trucks here to Lake Tabalak, along with their surviving animals. With a few cattle and camels in tow, they still looked like nomads. But here, they were not. Tanja mama do ya zo, shum tabarade. Ya she hila ni duk, su zo tabalas. E abasu, lambuna, ay ay ki lambuna, abasu, to. Abbasu Taimako, Ari Yesu. Everything a nomad knows, learned from long desert wanderings, and passed from grandfather to father to son, doesn't help here. Instead, new ways must be learned to coax this land into yielding a livelihood. e aiki wadda ba ka sani ba kana yi ka sani akwai wuya ba mu taba yi noma ba ba mu taba mu de gona sai mu ganshi da ido can muna wushe da shanun mu to yanzu mun gansu muna noma to ka sani guzo ana karewa ina mun ka san haka nan and they had so much to learn from something as simple as preparing unfamiliar food to something as essential as how to grow it. When the government settled the Fulani here, they enlisted the help of the Hausa, the local farmers, to teach the newcomers the ways of agriculture. Each family was given a parcel of land, some seed and simple tools, and they were given weekly rations. Enough food to see them through to their first harvest. If it all seemed new and confusing, at least there were a few conveniences. Like a pump with plenty of clean water. And the government dug shallow wells the new farmers could irrigate their fields. Traditionally, Sahelian farmers depended on the short rainy season to grow one crop a year. Now, with well water in a long dry season, they can grow crops all year round. In time, perhaps, they'll be less vulnerable to the cycles of the drought. Gona bananan, Munsa Muhazi, Munsa Muhazi, Munshi Aba Musaidaba, Bamusaidaba, Mamun Shanye, Yenzu Babu, 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 and in its place, they began to build something new. The government's policy of settling nomads and turning them into farmers is controversial. They didn't choose to come here. But staying at Lake Tabalak, learning how the settled people live and growing their own food, at least it's kept the family alive. Others still long to take their few animals and wander once again the vast open spaces. And some of them have done just that. Rebo, though, he's not joining them. Here he hopes to provide a more secure future for his family. <laughs> harda dal harda lokol mamuna so ayimumu muzamna kenan school was once unthinkable to nomads but they're no longer nomads and just as rebo is learning in the fields he hopes that his children will learn in school the skills that they need to survive in a changed world 
Rebo is like millions of Africans whose lives were saved by emergency relief in the mid-1980s. But now the question becomes, how can he? Indeed, how can all Africans start to build a better future for themselves and for their children? It's a question that's long been debated by foreign advisors and aid organizations, but too often their answers have had little connection to the lives of the people here. Personne ne peut, eh, personne, je dis bien, ne peut transplanter son développement dans un pays d'autrui. Ce n'est pas faisable. De toutes les façons, eh, on l'a tenté depuis des années. Eh, les indépendances sont vieilles maintenant, depuis 25 ans, un quart de siècle. On n'a fait que ça, tra essayer de transplanter ce qui est impossible. Et compte tenu de ça, nous n'avons pas nous, nous, on n'a pas eu eh, l'occasion de se tracer une voie personnelle en tenant compte des réalités des lieux. And the most urgent reality now is to preserve and nurture the farmland they still have. They must stop the advancing desert. Armed with shovels and picks, the people battle daily with the ever-shifting sands of the Sahel. Here, farmers and herders are building fences to stop the dunes from burying their homes, their fields, and their pasture lands. But protecting the remaining farmland is simply not enough to save the future. Somehow out of its rubble, Niger must coax into life new fields and new forests. It may all look impossible, but the seeds for such a miracle are being sown right now in the rocky earth of the Keta Valley. The project Keta contributes to alleviate these contraintes that have been expressed by the population of Keta. Parmi ces contraintes, il faut noter donc, la récupération des terres, parce qu'il manque énormément de terres ici, il y a une forte dégradation des terres. Il faut noter le reboisement, parce que c'est une région également qui manque de bois, puisque les femmes parcourent deux fois 15 km à pied pour aller chercher du bois de, du bois de, de chauffe. Seeing this land now, it's difficult to believe that a generation ago, these valleys were fertile fields and these hillsides were covered with trees. Today, the people here are committed to making it that way again. Every day, 2,000 volunteers are trucked to the valley's several work sites. For the most part, it's the women and the girls who come to work in this 110 degree heat. Here they receive no wages beyond a small food ration for themselves and their families. With foreign assistance and years of their own labor, the people of Keita are building a rainwater catchment on the valley floor. 
The rocks are placed one by one to make long, low barriers across the landscape. Now, there's enough rainfall in this region for agriculture, if they can trap the rainwater. Farmers of the Sahel have used this water and soil conserving technology for centuries. But now they're doing it on a massive scale. And if successful, they will make over 25,000 acres productive once again. That's enough to feed 150,000 people. But the valley must also be protected from driving desert sands. For this, they need trees, millions of trees. One day, these saplings will grow into windbreaks to protect Cato's valuable fields. They'll eventually provide firewood, construction timber, and other forest products. Planting has already begun. Each tree is carefully placed in its own small ditch that will collect rainwater and send it down to its roots. Though not all saplings will make it, enough will reach maturity to combat erosion and give the next generation something more than a barren and useless landscape. C'est un arrondissement plein d'avenir. Plein d'avenir si on arrive à faire le maximum de récupération des terres. Si on arrive à faire le maximum au point de vue reboisement pour stabiliser les érosions éoliennes et hydriques. Et si on arrive également à anéantir les effets des courries qui euh, répandent, qui transportent les eaux vers d'autres zones, au lieu de les répandre dans l'ensemble des terres cultivables. Moi, je pense que c'est un arrondissement plein d'avenir si on arrive à mener des actions concrètes et surtout des actions vraiment pour enrayer cet accident euh, du relief. C'est mon souhait. Mon souhait serait vraiment d'amener mes petits-enfants voir un peu ce que nous avons essayé de faire et quel a été le résultat. Surtout de voir quel a été le résultat dans, dans une vingtaine d'années. In less than 20 years, Kata could look like this. The techniques being used to transform Kata were first tried here in the Maja Valley with stunning results. Thirteen thousand acres of farmland protected from erosion. Enough trees to begin firewood harvesting and crop yields up by 20%. Marja Valley's success became the inspiration for Keita. And for similar reclamation projects throughout the Sahel. Saving the land from the desert. Restoring croplands and forests. Sustained determined efforts that are tailored to local needs. Il faut que les partenaires nous comprennent que ce qu'on leur demande, c'est un soutien. Ce n'est pas la peine de penser et faire pour nous, non. Nous voulons penser pour nous, commencer à faire par nous-mêmes et qu'ils viennent nous soutenir à améliorer ce qu'on est en train de faire. Mais ne pas nous, 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 nous amener autre chose pour dire que ça va être fait comme ça, comme ça. Ça n'a jamais réussi. Et si on ne change pas dans les 20 ans à venir, c'est que eh, au lieu d'aider l'Afrique à sortir de ses problèmes, on va l'aider à s'enfoncer définitivement et à plus d'Afrique. There's still a chance for recovery in Africa. But time is short. And budget's limited. So a new direction is emerging for Africa and her development partners. A direction inspired by Africans themselves. Et d'ici 20 ans, nous pensons que on nous on nous on nous on soutient nos initiatives de développement et nous pensons que d'ici 20 ans nous allons pouvoir améliorer notre existence mais soutenir je dis soutenir 
euh, avoir justement cette liberté de pouvoir initier ces projets de développement, pouvoir les commencer et se faire soutenir pour atteindre l'objectif. You know, somehow it's easier to be generous in a crisis, but it's a lot harder to make a sustained long-term commitment. A commitment where we work shoulder to shoulder with Africans themselves. That, my friends, is what Africa needs today. <laughs> 